dear students in this class we are going to learn about plant growth promoting rhizobacteria that is abbreviated as pgpr myself dr girish k assistant professor at postgraduate department of microbiology maharani science college for women jlb road mysore plant growth promoting rhizobacteria plant growth promoting rhizobacteria are a heterogeneous group of bacteria that can be found in the rhizosphere as well as on the root surfaces and in association with roots that improve the plant growth and also reduce the diseases a large number of microorganisms such as bacteria fungi protozoa and algae all coexist in the rhizosphere bacteria are the most abundant among them the presence of rhizobacteria in rhizosphere can have a neutral detrimental or beneficial effect on plant growth most of the bacteria exert a beneficial effect on plant growth and are termed plant growth promoting rhizobacteria pgpr can affect plant growth by different direct and indirect mechanisms some examples of these mechanisms which can probably be active simultaneously or sequentially at different stages of plant growth are increased mineral nutrient solubilization nitrogen fixation both these make nutrients available for the plant improving plant stress tolerance to drought salinity and metal toxicity production of plant growth regulators like indole acetic acid gibberellic acid cytokinins and lowering of ethylene concentration lastly repression of soil borne pathogens it is an indirect method how this is done by the production of hydrogen cyanide sideropores antibiotics and or competition for nutrients in the last few years the number of pgpr that have been identified has seen a great increase various species of bacteria like pseudomonas azospirulum azotobacter klebsiella enterobacter alkali genes arthrobacter burkholderia bacillus and serratia have been reported to enhance the plant growth there are several pgpr inoculants currently commercialized that seem to promote growth through at least one mechanism suppression of plant diseases they are called bioprotectants improved nutrient acquisition they are called biofertilizers or phytohormone production they are called biostimulants so these three mechanisms the pgpr can improve the plant growth first nitrogen fixing bacteria the major activity what we can observe among pgpr is their ability to fix nitrogen as we all know nitrogen is one of the most common nutrients required for plant growth and productivity as it forms an integral part of proteins nucleic acids and many other essential biomolecules this nitrogen fixing can happen in two ways one is symbiotic nitrogen fixation and asymbiotic nitrogen fixation the symbiotic nitrogen fixing forms are rhizobium bradyrhizobium which are obligate symbionts with the leguminous plants and another one is frankia a actinomycet which has symbiotic association in non leguminous trees plant growth promoting rhizobacteria that fix nitrogen in non leguminous plants are called diazotropes they form a non obligate interaction with the host the process of nitrogen fixation is carried out by the nitrogenase enzyme which is coded by nif genes 
One of the best studied diazotropes for nitrogen fixation is azospirum species. Others which uh, can improve the growth of rice, maize and sugar cane include Azotobacter diazotropicus, Herbaspirillum seropdk, Azoarchus species, Enterobacter asberiae and some strains of Burkholderia species. Next, phosphate solubilizing bacteria. In addition to nitrogen, plant also require phosphate. This phosphate is not readily available in the nature. They are either present in the unavailable organic form or insoluble inorganic form that is the rock phosphate. So what this PGPR will do, they will help in solubilizing this uh, inorganic phosphate as well as mineralizing the organic phosphate and making them available for the plants. The ability of some microorganisms to convert insoluble phosphorus to an accessible form like orthophosphate is an important triad in the PGP bacteria that is plant growth promoting bacteria for increasing the plant yields. Rhizobacteria are capable of increasing availability of phosphorus either by mineralization of organic phosphate or by solubilization of inorganic phosphate by producing organic acids. The rock phosphate is the major form of phosphorus in the soil but its availability to plants is limited because uh, of this what PGPR can do is they can produce the organic acids and solubilize this inorganic, uh, uh, organic, uh, inorganic phosphorus and make it available to the plants. The most efficient PCSB belong to genera Azotobacter, Bacillus in that two species, Bacillus cereus, Bacillus megatheria, Rhizobium and Pseudomonas. Ammonia oxidizing bacteria abbreviated as AOB. Few PGPR are known to oxidize ammonia. They oxidize ammonia to nitrite. Here you find two bacteria nitrosomonas and nitrosococcus. And then this nitrite is then again oxidized to nitrate by nitrite oxidizing bacteria like nitrobacter and nitrosococcus. And plants they can assimilate both nitrite and nitrate. These bacteria can also make the growth of plants in uh, wastewater contaminated water sources or sewage contaminated water sources which are rich in ammonia. That is the very importance of this AOB. They help uh, the cultivation of plants uh, using sewage water. Next elemental sulfur. So the plants can assimilate sulfur in the form of sulfate therefore this elemental sulfur has to be converted to sulfate and sulfur oxidizing bacteria like thiobacillus they can bring about this conversion of elemental sulfur to sulfate. In experiments it has been identified that seeds which are coated with uh, sulfur oxidizing bacteria like thiobacillus they can help better growth of high sulfur demanding crops. Sideropore production. So iron. Iron is an essential growth element for all living organisms. The scarcity of bioavailable iron in soil, habitats and on plant surfaces makes, uh, brings a severe competition among the soil microorganisms for iron. So in their iron limiting cons conditions this PGPR they produce certain low molecular weight compounds called sideropores which competitively acquire the iron that is available in the soil. Sideropore the term is obtained from Greek which means iron carrier. They are small high affinity iron chelating compounds produced by PGPR. The sideropores after release they scavenge the iron mainly in the form of ferric complexes which can be easily taken up by the plants. Apart from iron, the PGPR produced sideropores can also scavenge heavy metals 
and make them available for the growth of plants. Heavy metals are also very much required by the plants for their growth but in very minute quantity they are therefore termed as micronutrients. Most of the isolates that uh, can produce sideropores they belong to gram negative bacteria mainly to the genera Pseudomonas and Enterobacter but few uh, the gram positive bacteria also can produce sideropores like Bacillus and Rhodococcus genera. Phytohormones The other mechanism apart from nutrient acquisition the PGPR can improve plant growth is by inducing the production of phytohormones. They can by themselves produce the phytohormones or they can make plants to produce phytohormones. One of the direct mechanism by which PGPR promote plant growth is through the production of the phytohormones. Mainly three phytohormones are important auxins, cytokinins and ethylene. Auxins and cytokinins, their production is increased while ethylene production is decreased by phytohormones. First, coming to the auxins, many bacteria like Azospirulum, Pseudomonas, Xanthomonas, Rhizobium, Alkali genes Fecalis, Enterobacter cloacae, Acetobacter diazotropicus, Barabradi Rhizobium japanicum, all these they are known to produce auxins. And when these auxins are produced, they can induce plant growth by cell enlargement, cell division, root initiation, increasing the growth rate, phototropism, geotropism, apical dominance. By all these mechanisms, they can improve the plant growth. Next, cytokinins. Cytokinins are another important phytohormones required for better plant growth. The cytokinins can improve plant growth by enhancing cell division, by enhancing root development, by enhancing root head formation, by shoot initiation and many other mechanisms. Few PGPR are known to produce the cytokinins. They include Corinebacterium fasciens, Azotobacter crucocum, Azotobacter vinylandi, Rhizopogon, Roseolus, Azospirola, Spirillum brasilans, Arthrobacter, Gyacomeli, Pseudomonas fluorescens, etc. All these are known to produce cytokinins. Lastly, ethylene production. Actually, PGPRs reduce the ethylene production by production of ACCD aminase. ACC means amino cyclopropane carboxylate. Microbes utilize this as nitrogen source and thereby deplete its availability for plant cells to produce ethylene. By this way, they decrease the senescence as well as increase the root elongation and help in the plant growth. The indirect method of PGPR in inducing plant growth is by reducing the plant pathogens, by inhibiting the growth of plant pathogens. They can act thereby as post prospective biocontrol agents. By several mechanisms, they can uh, reduce the growth of uh, pathogens. Examples of uh, the mechanisms, they include the antibiosis by the production of antibiotics, by producing the cell wall degrading enzymes, by producing the sideropores and the by producing cyanide. By producing all these metabolites, the plant pro uh, growth promoting rhizobacteria can inhibit the growth of many plant pathogens and thereby indirectly they can induce the plant growth. Several PGPR strains can also act as inducers of ISR that means induced systemic resistance that means they induce resistance in the plants directly. Plants will gain resistance against the plant pathogens. PGPR mediated ISR may be an alternative to the use of chemical inducers or uh, the avirulent pathogens for inducing systemic acquired resistance. As of now, the ISR is induced in plants by using certain chemicals or avirulent strains of pathogens. Instead of that, in future we can go with the plant growth promoting 
rhizobacteria antibiosis this is one of the major mechanism by which pgpr can inhibit the growth of plant pathogens many research have been done and uh, that has helped us to isolate identify and uh, utilize many of such antibiotics some of the examples of such antibiotics include ampicin 2,4 diacetyl fluoroglucinol that is DAPG, Oomycin A, Panazine, Pyolo, Teorin, Firrol, Nitrine, Tensin, Tropolone, Cyclic Lipopeptides, etc. All these they are produced by Pseudomonads that means the bacteria belonging to the genera Pseudomonas. Apart from this other antibiotics like Oligomycin A, Canosomine, Zwittermycin A and Xanthobaxin they are all produced by Bacillus, Streptomyces, Stenotropomonas species etc. These antibiotics are well known to inhibit the growth of plant pathogenic bacteria as well as fungi. Lactic enzyme production few PGPR can produce the enzymes that degrade the pathogenic cell wall like the cell wall hydrolases. Two major such enzymes they include chitinase and 1,3-glucanase. Both of them they act against the fungal cell wall. Chitinase is produced by Serratia marcescens, Serratia plimuthica, Phenibacillus strain 300, Streptomyces species strain 385, Pseudomonas strutzeri etc. The 1,3-glucanase is produced by Burkholderia capacia, Penibacillus species strain 300 and Streptomyces species strain 385. As I mentioned earlier, they all lyse the fungal cell walls. HCN production. We all know cyanide is a highly toxic chemical and the PGPR can kill the pathogens by producing this cyanide. Cyanide production is found to be a common trait of pseudomonads. Almost 88.89% known pseudomonas strains they can produce this cyanide. And apart from that, the other major bacteria is Bacillus. Nearly 50% of the known species they are known to produce cyanide, hydrogen cyanide. In pseudomonas, major species include pseudomonas frege, pseudomonas fluorescens, pseudomonas putida. And in Bacillus, it includes Bacillus subtilis and Bacillus cereus. Cyanide acts as a general metabolic inhibitor. However, role of cyanide production is contradictory as uh, it may be associated with Dilisterius as well as beneficial rhizobacteria. And uh, another thing is cyanide can, uh, can affect even the plant cell. Therefore, this considering this has an uh, important triad, is uh, debatable others other mechanisms include quenching the quorum sensing capacity of pathogens pathogens to have an interaction with the plant they have to have this quorum sensing capacity pgpr will uh, uh, quench or delete this capacity and thereby avoiding the infection of plants by plant pathogens and another thing they degrade auto inducer which has the capability of uh, inducing expression of many virulence genes in pathogens. So when this autoinducer is degraded, pathogens fail to express many of their virulence genes. Another mechanism of biological control is the detoxification of pathogen virulence factors. For example, Xanthomonas albiniasum. This bacteria, plant pathogenic bacteria, is known to produce a uh, toxin called albicidin. So PGPR will uh, detoxify this toxin. Fusarium, a major pathogenic fungi, it is known to produce fusaric acid and uh, PGPR are known to detoxify this toxin. The induced systemic resistance. So plants by themselves can develop resistance against uh, plant pathogens and uh, it can be all over the plant body when it is called a systemic acquired resistance. Plants can be made to have systemic acquired resistance by applying some external components 
as earlier said chemicals and uh, a virulent pathogens are used but now interest is using the pgpr bacillus and pseudomonas are among the most studied genera of pgpr with respect to isr these two they are known to induce the sar by production of salicylic acid jasmonic acid and pr proteins apart from that they also can induce the production of enzymes like peroxidases phenyl alanine ammonia lyase pal and polyphenol oxidase ppo all these phenol oxidizing enzymes they can induce defense mechanisms and another enzyme lipoxygenase which produces the products that can induce defense reactions in the plant and also the induction of phytoalexins phytoalexins are uh, uh, well known antimicrobial compounds that are produced by plants by all this the pgpr can induce in systemic resistance in the plants so these are the mechanisms by which the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria can promote the plant growth but uh, they also have some limitations that is when they are applied in the field they cannot uh, provide complete effectiveness this is because they have to face many environmental factors like climate weather conditions soil characteristics or the composition or activity of the indigenous microbial flora of the soil which is a major thing the competition from the indigenous microbial flora which is already present in the soil so therefore to improve the effectiveness it becomes very important to know how these rhizobacteria exert their effect on the plants and whether the effect are altered by environmental factors and if they are uh, altered what type of alteration happens this knowledge having this knowledge will help us to improve the effectiveness of the pgpr and one possible approach is to explore soil microbial diversity for pgpr uh, in combination of uh, pgp activities they are uh, they can be well adapted to a particular soil environment that means from a particular soil where we want to grow the crop we can isolate bacteria acclimatize them in the laboratory grow them in large scale and then reintroduce them to the soil otherwise genetically manipulate the host crops itself for what for root associated traits so that the establishment of pgpr in the rhizosphere is enhanced and another thing is instead of using only one strain inoculum we can go with multi strain inoculum of pgpr so that if one strain fails the other strain can be functional and that increases the effectiveness of the pgpr so friends by this slide we come to the end of this topic so pgpr is a very important group of bacteria that are present in the plant rhizosphere which have the capability of increasing the plant growth and therefore we can exploit them to as biofertilizers to improve the plant growth as well as the yield of the plants thank you